What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm back here again with another sports car collecting and investing video. I'm extremely excited about this video today, guys. Um, I know I haven't put out content for you guys in a while. I'm extremely disappointed in myself for not doing that as I have been very, very busy for the past month and a half. But I'm very excited to bring this out for you guys. It's well thought out. Um, I hope you guys do enjoy. If you are brand new to this channel, make sure you do like this video, comment, let me know what you think, as well as subscribe to the channel for more uh, content. Uh, I've been going to a bunch of the card shows lately, and uh, I've been talking to a bunch of vendors and stuff like that, as well as, you know, just getting a whole new perspective on the sports card hobby. And, uh, you know, pretty much the, the past few months have been, you know, a blur. It's It's been a, this has been the most amazing time of my life, honestly, you know, collecting cards again as a kid, uh, pretty much like being a kid, you know, I'm having so much fun with this, as well as making a pretty good amount of money and, you know, living in my own place. So, you know, I'm very grateful for those things that have happened here in the past few months. Now I was noticing, you know, some things that just weren't adding up. And uh, it was only, in, you know, before time that I was kind of like, okay, you know, I need to change something up. And uh, it's, it's happened with a lot of people. And so I pretty much, you know, wrote a, bu a bunch of stuff down, started doing some research. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited and very passionate about this hobby. And uh, I'm very excited about this video. Uh, I think this is potentially the, you know, one of the moves to make right now or transition into. Uh, I don't want to lead you guys on and, you know, tell you, hey, go buy something, but go buy something. I don't want to be one of those YouTube channels where, you know, I just tell you, go buy this person because I think they're good. Um, and I don't want to feed off other people's ideas. And, you know, well, I mean, everybody kind of, you know, feeds off of people's ideas and get a, get a good, you know, sense of what they're about to talk about. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while and I was telling a bunch of people that this whenever I was selling at a card show in November and it actually happened. So, you know, this is something that is, uh, you know, a personal story for me as well as, you know, I just want to pretty much share this with, you know, a bunch of hobbyists, collectors, investors, you know, anybody that's just flipping in the card game. You know, this is a, a problem. It's not really a problem, but it's kind of just, you know, how the state of the market is right now. But I'm extremely excited about the state of the hobby going forward. Uh, I haven't posted in about, it's been, I think, 40 days. Um, so it's been almost a month and a half. And uh, pretty much a bunch of stuff went went down in the last month and a half. So I went to a bunch of card shows. You know, we all saw the Jordan High one went for over a half a million dollars, which is crazy. The Jordan cards have just exploded. Um, you know, 2008 Topps Chrome has exploded. Hall of Famers have exploded. And uh, modern cards have corrected themselves, which, you know needed to happen so you know this is pretty much what i think is the uh the move at the moment obviously you know trends happen and things move very quickly in this hobby so um the, the way i'm looking at this is just right now current date february mid-february today's the 12th i think or today's valentine's day um but extremely excited about this guys we're gonna be talking about pretty much how i've been investing and collecting cards and what cards I've been buying. Now, like I said, I don't want to lead you guys on and say, go buy these guys, go buy these players, go buy, you know, because I like them. Um, I want to, I want you guys to understand the mindset behind it. So, you know, first of all, I moved a bunch of stuff during November at a card show, a bunch of my PSA submissions. Uh, the first PSA submission, like back in August, I moved off pretty much a good amount of it um, at a card show. And I invested into, there was a bunch of cards that I just never got to show you guys. I invested into LeBron James rookies, um, Trey Young rookies. And, uh, you know, I I was on this, on this big train myself. I was just so believed that, like, I was just believe, believing so much in my head that Trey Young was going to explode this year. And while he did throughout the first two weeks of the season, he started playing, you know, subpar and his cards just dwindled down to cheaper than what they were currently or like before the season you know the before season hype is always the is, is always pretty much kind of close to the peak um now the lebron cards were you know steadily climbing up so um i invested a good amount in the trey young four figures um it was you know almost six thousand dollars and uh i'm i'm i moved during november i bought the lebron james PSA 9 tops and PSA 8 tops. I got both of them for a combined $1,300, which was an amazing deal. Um, and I ended up, at the last card show, this was in January, I ended up moving them and the Trey Youngs. And I, you know, cashed out 
I did take some losses on the Trey Youngs, but I cashed out and um, I looked at the the best way right now for modern cards personally for me, and I think that is sealed wax. So I bought a bunch of sealed wax uh, 2019 as far as NBA basketball. I don't know if you guys got a good look, but 2019 NBA basketball. And I'm just kicking myself because you guys have been on this channel and you guys have seen my earlier videos. There's a box right there, just a whole container, a whole basket full of just empty boxes, empty sealed wax. Um, and I feel so dumb for opening it. Um, you know, there was a bunch of, there's like seven optic mega boxes in there from 2019. And optic mega boxes went ballistic. They're close to 300. I remember I sold my last one that I had. It was just at the very top, whenever I was making videos in like August and September. And I sold it for like 140. And then out of nowhere, it's like 270, 300. But that's not the point I'm trying to make here. I, I do want to say 2019 or 2018, sealed wax is the way to go, I think, personally, um, for the modern players at the moment. Um, I, I think that that is a trend that people are starting to catch on to. And uh, I paid resale for all this. So, you know, obviously I'm paying more than retail, but there's a, a big, there's a big uh, amount of, like, I believe personally, that sealed wax will be the way to go with modern cards um, as, as far as right now what it looks like so you know and, and if you have trouble with selling sealed wax like on facebook or um card shows or anything like that which really shouldn't be a problem but you know if you go on facebook there's unfortunately a lot of uh derogatory comments but uh you can always go on StockX. i don't know if a lot of people a lot of people still personally don't even know about StockX. that uh, you know you can just pretty much cash out immediately and and you know send it off so that that's a great way i don't know if you guys are familiar with StockX, but you know look at StockX, and if you have a bunch of sealed wax and you're just trying to move it you know that's honestly the way to go with sealed wax and it's close to market value but something i do want to talk about today is uh the trends of uh you know established players as well as you know the the very hype players today so you know as you guys have seen the market has technically corrected itself you know you see zion cards and uh you know you see like Jalen Brown, Zach Levine, Devin Booker, Fox, Bam, Donovan Mitchell. And, you know, I just came to realization, like, yes, I am a complete Bam Adebayo fan. I'm a Miami Heat fan. I would love for Bam Adebayo to be the best player in the world someday because I can cash out. But I, I have to be realistic. And uh, I think a lot of people are not very realistic with uh, their approach as to a long-term hold. So, um you know, I think that emotional connection, you, you got to get it out the door if you're looking to invest in this hobby. And I figured that out very quick when I was going to card shows and people were just moving stuff so very fast. And uh, they were staying away from the moderns, honestly. And I was like confused, like, you know, I, I got this down under comps um, and people weren't, you know, buying, buying, buying. So, you know, I, I looked at that and I was like, well, there's got to be, you know, something that people buy. And then I, I just kept seeing people buy um, Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, LeBron. Obviously, everybody knows, everybody wants those players. But for example, even, for example, we'll start with uh, De'Aaron Fox, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Colin Sexton, Jamal Murray. We'll start with those hyped, you know, overhyped players that are, they're not really overhyped, but we'll start with the hypest uh, point guards, shooting guards in the league. Um, and I did a comparison, you know, like, if, if you look at them, they're, they're the most sought for hype player, young players, you know, let's compare them to somebody from the 2000s or 2010s or the 90s. You know, I, I came with Russell Westbrook, Allen Iverson, Tony Parker, Steve Nash. You know, if you're a Shea Gilgis Alexander fan, De'Aaron Fox fan, you know, and you love them to death, you know, more power to you. Um, I, I'm very big fans of them myself. I love their games. But we have to be honest with ourselves, guys, in the modern card game is De'Aaron Fox or, you know, not, or Colin Sexton or Shea Gilgis Alexander really going to be better than Russell Westbrook all time or Steve Nash or Tony Parker? You know, Tony Parker was a five-time champ, four-time champion. I don't think, yeah, four-time champion, finals MVP. Um, you know, Steve Nash was a two-time MVP, you know, multiple-time assist leader. And, uh, you know, we have to come to that realization that that's that's not very realistic and you're betting a lot of money for it to be and it's unfortunately it's going to burn you in the future um 
So whenever I see a bunch of channels that say, hey, this is like a, you know, this is a great buy long term. Like, let's say just for example, Shea Gilge Alexander, you know, Colin Sexton, how, however, whoever you want to look at, you know, I, I just come to that realization, like, are they really going to be better than this player that's still not even sought for? Um, one of the big ones, like I said, I'm a big BAM fan. And a lot of people know that, you know, I'm a Miami Heat fan. So you guys have seen on this channel, I, I you know, endorse BAM Adebayo. Like, I, I love his game. It's very complete. I'm a very big fan. I'm a very big investor in him. But then I came to, like I said, my realization, is he really going to be better than Kevin Garnett or Charles Barkley or a Chris Bosh? I mean, he could maybe get a little better than Chris Bosh. Maybe, but are we, you know, is that a guarantee? Chris Bosh is the first battle Hall of Famer or a second battle Hall of Famer because he didn't make it this year, excuse me. Charles Barkley is the first battle Hall of Famer. Kevin Garnett is the first battle Hall of Famer. You know, these guys have already been there, done that, you know, on pace and career is what we have to look at, you know. Okay, he's on pace to be this good, but what has his career really done? So, um, you know, I was looking at, I think the four most desired young players today, personally, you know, I wrote these down, and that's Zion Williamson, Luka Doncic, Trey Young, and Jason Tatum. Um, you know, we're going to be looking here at the card ladder, and uh, we'll start, for example, with Zion Williamson. We'll go with uh, his base PSA 10, which is the most sought for card. And it's corrected itself. Like I said, you know, during the season, that's peak, you know, it hit $1,000. It's right now at current value, 613. So that's the base. Um, and let's look at, you know, Luka Doncic base PSA 10. And, uh, you know, it corrected itself too. You know, it was close to 2,000 as well, um, right before the season, One, literally 2,000. Uh, this was December 24th, $1,979. But it's corrected itself. The current value is, you know, under $1,400, $1,379. Uh, Jason Tatum, we'll look at his as well. And, um, you know, his current value is at $708. So, you know, very attainable um, if you want to see it like that. But very expensive, honestly, for a player that, for three players that personally haven't really done anything. Um, yes, they are amazing talents, and yes, they are possibly the future of the league, but look how bad Trey Young has crashed. His current value, base PSA 10, is already at 430. You know, January the 4th, it was at 800. Um, you know, the market is seeing a, such a correction, and now, now that's not to say that it's going to stay like this. I don't want, I don't want to lead it as to look into the classics. Look, because I, I don't want you guys to, to think of it like that. Um, like to think that modern cards are dying down or something. But they needed this correction. And a lot of people I don't think uh, understood that. I think uh, the vets uh, of the sports card hobby, like the real investors and collectors, they looked, you know, they looked at this time where it was kind of like, oh, okay, they're after these, these young players that are pretty much a gimmick at the moment. You know, they look at that as a gimmick at the moment because, you know, they're just feasting on getting, you know, Kobe Bryant, Tim Duncan, LeBron, and those are the ones that have been rising lately. So, like, for example, we'll look at uh, a Tim Duncan. We'll just look at the tops, not even the tops, Chrome. You know, we'll look at the tops, uh, PSA 10. It's 1,500. So, Zion Williamson, during, I think it was December 24th, was at he was at uh what was it I think it was like a thousand pretty much so we'll go to December 24th here for Tim Duncan's tops we'll go to December 20th it was at 850 there is no absolute way no reason that a Zion Williamson base prism should be more expensive than a Tim Duncan PSA 10 this is a pretty much <laughs> this is the, the best put in my opinion I mean I, I wasn't I wasn't around in the 90s or the 80s, but I think in my opinion, Tim Duncan is the best power forward of all time. This is, and if anything, he's a top 10 player ever. This is a five-time champion, three-time finals MVP, four-time, I, I believe, um, MVP of the league. You know, there's no, it just doesn't make viable sense that a, a Luka or a Zion or a Trey or a Tatum at one point was really beating this, this established star. E even if it's, uh, and I, I know a lot of people say, well, he's the big man. He's a big man. Big men are not sought for. Okay. 
that's fine. We can we can look at that. But let's look at the Kobe Bryant tops. You know, Kobe is a arguably a top ten. People always argue top five player. Um, you know, as far as influence, I think he's you know he's one of the most influential. But you know, this tops PSA ten during December twenty fourth when Zion Williamson was you know um, a thousand or you know, Luke, Lucas was a thousand nine hundred. December 19th, you know, $2,400 for a Topps PSA 10 Kobe. You know, there's no, there's just no reason that, that, that that card should have been that close. There's no trajectory that says Luca is on par with Kobe Bryant at this point already. Because they're, they're just, it didn't make viable sense. So, you know, I, I think uh, this right now the current move, you know, if you look at it, is looking into those established car stars. And uh, like I said, I don't want to push anybody the wrong way and say, okay, well, we need to move out of modern and go straight to vintage. People have been talking for vintage for a while, and I really wasn't listening. However, the data is there, um, you know, and, and it's unfortunate right now. But I'm telling you, it doesn't mean that modern cards are dying. You know, modern cards are going to get that trend again whenever football just ended. Uh, modern cards, I believe, are going to get that trend again once, you know, the playoffs start rolling. You know, now we're deep into the NBA season already. You know, we're like 30, almost 40 games in. So, you know, it's it's going to be it's going to be great. I think the hobby's in great hands, honestly. I just I really wanted to get that out there as to, you know, th this is something that's been on my head. Like, there's no way I was telling a bunch of people, there's no way that. Tatum, Trey, even no matter how good you think they are right now at this moment, there's no way they should be as expensive as Kobe or as a LeBron or as a Tim Duncan. And then, you know, we'll look at, so I was looking at, you know, the league leaders as far as, you know, everybody loves scoring, especially in the card market. They love scores. So, you know, for the young scores, you know, very soft four players is Bradley Beal, Jalen Brown, Zach Levine, Devin Booker, so I did like a comparison as well with those players. Um, and, I, and I compared them. We'll, we'll start with Devin Booker first. You know, his current value, 934. So uh, let's go to beginning of the season. Beginning of season, you know, 18th, 1,300. So those four players that I mentioned, Bradley Beal, Jalen Brown, Zach Levine, Devin Booker. Do you guys really believe they're going to be better than Dwayne Wade all time? I just want that to sink in for a while. Dwayne Wade was my favorite player growing up. As much as I love Bradley Beal's game, as much as I love Jalen Brown's game, Zach Levine and Devin Booker's game, there's no way that anybody really believes that any of those four would be better all time. Now, obviously, you know, they're young, so they have a lot of time left. But at this current moment, we'll start with the tops. We only have to go to the tops chrome. You know, Dwayne Wade's current value on this, a PSA 10 is 859. So during December when Devin Booker's was 1,300, Dwayne Wade's PSA 10 tops was at $435, which is ridiculous. So you could have gotten three Dwayne Wade's for the price of one Devin Booker. Um, and we'll go here as well with uh, a Zach Levine, for, or we'll go with uh, Bradley Beal. And Bradley Beal's playing out of his mind. You know, I don't want to take anything away from him, but you know, the the stats are there. The facts are there. Zach, uh, Bradley Beal, unfortunately, was snubbed of the All-Star game last year. We all remember that. It was one of the biggest robberies. He was averaging 30 a game, and he got snubbed. But even with, with being snubbed and him being an All-Star starter this year, he doesn't have the accolades. He's not on par with Dwayne Wade. Um, his current value is 949 during December, you know, 725, and still Dwayne Wade was at 430. And that's just the Topps model. You know, I was looking at the Topps Chrome We'll go to the Dwayne Wade Topps Chrome Base PSA 10, obviously, which is the most sought for now. But look at the trajectory lately, guys. 4,750 was the last biggest sale on February the 10th. And during the beginning of the season, we'll go here. We'll go to like 1223, right when the season started. 1,515. So you could have got the Base Topps Chrome Dwayne Wade PSA 10 for the, close to the same price as the Devin Booker was. Um, so I, I just wanted to share that and, uh, you know, I, I want to talk to you guys about players that I think are, are really good investments. Um, like I said, I don't want to say, Hey, buy these players, buy these players, but you know, 
we just have to be honest with ourselves, guys. We're all basketball fans, um, sports fans. So this this is strictly about basketball. Um, you know, I could talk football as well, but you know, I'm I'm a big basketball fan. So um, I made a list here about you know current NBA Hall of Famers that are a lock already in the NBA currently. So you know, you got obviously LeBron, Steph, Katie, Kawhi, James Harden, Damian Lillard, Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, uh, Giannis. Chris Paul, Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard. Um, you know, you have Klay Thompson and who is that? I have terrible handwriting. Uh, I don't know who I wrote down there, unfortunately. Oh, uh, Kyrie. <laughs> Jesus, that was, that's awful handwriting. So those players that I just mentioned, you know, those players that I pretty much just mentioned, uh, you know, if you look at it, their their resumes are there. You know, they are Hall of Fame locks in this league already. You know, and and those are players that you're gonna see within the next year or maybe two years that people are gonna be already looking for to hold down long term and starting to get those numbered cards or those short prints and uh, those silvers. You know, prism. How, however, um, and then you know, there's like a bubble of players that are you know, on pace, or they have a great chance to make the Hall of Fame, and I, and I wrote down these players as well, you know, you have uh, Nicole Jokic, uh, Joel Embiid, Paul George, Jimmy Butler, uh, DeMar DeRozan, Derrick Rose, LaMarcus Aldridge, Kevin Love, Kyle Lowry, Blake Griffin, Rajon Rondo, Andre Godala, and Marc Gasol. That's currently in the league as stated. They're like on the bubble. Jokic has just came into his own, and Jokic, I think, is is such a and I don't think a lot of people give him that much credit. I think he's such a transcendent talent. I've, I've never seen a center that that good as, as far as uh, basketball IQ in a while. Um, but like, you know, we, we just have to, like I said, uh, I want to get this point of view out there that we just have to be extremely honest with ourselves um, whenever we're looking into these young players because we don't want to get burned down in the future. You know, like, um, here, here's a, a couple other hyped young players. Uh, you know, if we, if you want to compare, like Bam, Kristaps Porzingis, Donovan Mitchell, you know, ask yourself: Are they really going to be better than Kevin Garnett, uh, Dr. J, Allen Iverson? You know, Steve Nash. I, I even put Brandon Ingram on that list. You know, these are these are players that are extremely high and they have a volatile market at the moment, but. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, only the strong really do survive in this market. And I think that's, uh, as you can see, the trend is, is leading towards, you know, that I think that's the way to go here going forward. Um, I think buying sealed wax as well is a great investment. You know, everybody watches Sports Card Investor, obviously. So um, he, was, he was talking about buying sealed wax. So I, I did take some of that advice and, uh, you know, always be open to other ideas if you guys go to sports card shows guys go to the big tables and talk to those guys the guys who have you know the big cards that are worth tens tens of thousands of dollars you know talk to them and ask them questions they their cards are that much obviously and they've held on to them for a reason you know uh they know what they're doing um you know i i, I want to be very open to anybody on on anybody's advice so uh, I'm very, very excited about this video. I'm super nervous as well about this video because I haven't made a video in like a month and, and a half almost. So, you know, I, I wanted to get that out there. I wanted to see what you guys are thinking about the current state of the market and uh, what you guys thought about this video. So uh, I do want to show you guys just some late, latest pickups as well. Like, for example, some stuff. Like, like I said, I wish I would have shown you guys a bunch of stuff that I bought throughout December and January. I just, every time that I, I had them, I was like, oh, I'm gonna make a video, I'm gonna make a video. And I kept procrastinating, unfortunately, and I just didn't get the time. And then a card show would come and there they went. I took great scans of them though. So, you know, they're in my scan portfolio. So, um, first uh, I got this uh, Barry Bonds Tops Tiffany PSA 8. I got a very great deal on this. I got it for $60 at a card show. I got it for $60 and the comps were, um, you know, like around 80, 90. I got that about a week and a half ago. Uh, one of the ones that I'm very excited for, I got both of these Peyton Mannings. I got a Topps Chrome PSA 8. Um, 
and this 1998 Finest Rookie PSA 9. I got both of them for $300, and that was Super Bowl Sunday. The Topps Chrome that day was selling for, I think, $350, the PSA 8. And they've been moving lately, so very excited about that. And then uh, my biggest purchase was the Bowman 2000, 2000 uh, PSA 6 Tom Brady. Very, very excited. That is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Um, I think that's a very great long-term hold. So, you know, I'm very happy you guys joined me for this episode, guys. This was a very special episode. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, please make sure you put them on the comment section down below. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.